What's going on guys? Welcome back. Uh, last time we had left off with the blueprint and we were starting to fall into some of the, uh, the weightless discog. This is actually a very, very interesting EP. I feel like a lot of people that might have slipped under the radars. It was fully produced by Aesop Rock and uh, it's a conceptual EP. It's a storytelling album about like a blueprint essentially becoming a vigilante uh like i said man it's it's a dope storytelling and it's it's produced by aesop rock which is dope i'm not sure what this is uh instrumentals electric purgatory part two instrumentals and just some uh compilation of the people, uh, a lot of the artists on waitlist, uh, Blueprint, Logic, Jakai the Motor Mouth, uh, Zero Star. This is uh, another conceptual one. This is essentially a uh, Greenhouse vs. Radiohead. And it's uh, like like the earlier ones we talked about, it's built around uh, Radiohead samples. I love when Blueprint does that. I love when he picks a theme and he just kind of riffs on that theme for a whole album. B side compilation. Uh, this is this is Greenhouse as it currently stands. This is some of their newer releases. This is uh, Greenhouse now is just Blueprint and the Logic, just the two of them, and they're fucking they're an incredible combination. They they play off each other very well. I got this. This was a harder one to track down. I saw Illogic live, and he had uh, he actually had a few of the albums I needed, and I just ended up having enough money for one. But it's hard to see on there, but I did get a chance to talk to him after the show, and he signed this album for me. And this was the album that introduced me to him. And this is like this is a really this is another under the radar album. Like underground, underground, underground heads probably know about this album, but like. You gotta, it's a deep cut, and it's it's dope, it's incredible. That's a really, really, really good album. All of the Logic's work is fairly, I'm not even going to say fairly solid. His work is solid, he's a really good rapper. Celestial Clockwork is his highlight for me. Like, everything else just kind of pales in comparison to that. But that's not to say that his work is mediocre, it's just I feel like that album is so good. Zero Star, I actually met, he was running the merch table, and when I was buying the Logic CD, he was like, hey man, I'll throw my CD in for five bucks, and I wasn't familiar with him, like, I didn't recognize the name, even though I've had him on some of the compilations there, but five, five bucks, fuck it, throw it in there, and I got that, and that's a really good album, that's a solid one. Eden, Beauty and the Beat, a lot of people consider this to be a classic album. I haven't spent enough time with it to really have an opinion on it. I know every time I do listen to it, I enjoy it. But again, I'd have to spend more time with it. I really like this album and I got it signed by him at a show. And it's funny because I was a fan. I've been a fan of Yak Balls. Like I always I always dug dude. I had no idea what he looked like. So I go up to the table and I'm buying a CD and shit. And he's like, oh, you want me to open that and sign it for you? And I'm looking like, who the fuck is this dude? And then it dawns on me, like, oh shit, yeah, hook me up, bro, sign it. Uh, sadistic. I became aware of this guy from this album specifically because he did this thing where he was just giving it away on his website. And he was like, you pay shipping, you know, whatever shipping was, two, three dollars. It wasn't outrageous, you know, like fifteen dollars shipping for a free CD. It was legit. He was legit sending out free albums, and I respected that. Because I figure, like, if you if you're so sure of your work that you're willing to just give it out for free, because that's that you know it's that good. I was like, yeah, I'll take the time to listen. And I became a fan, and I've checked out a lot of his work since this album. And he's he's really good. He's got a tribute song to Idea on that album, and it's fucking probably the highlight of that whole record. Tone deaf. Slept on rapper. Uh, this was one of the 
this was one of the harder ones for me to track down. I always wanted this one. I always kept my eye on it. I finally got it for like $15. I usually don't like to pay over $20 for CDs. I finally snatched that one up for a good price. That made me happy. Charisma and Peanut Butter Wolf. Uh, Peanut Butter Wolf is probably best known now, obviously, for uh, running Stone's Throw. His label that had Mad Lib and had some Dilla projects and a lot of incredible albums. But before he did that, this was originally what his situation was. You know, Charisma was his rapper and he was essentially Charisma's DJ. Uh, and then Charisma was murdered. But this was the album that was originally supposed to launch his career before the, the murder derailed everything. He did come back though. This was, I think it might be his only like legit solo album. I could be wrong about that. A lot of people consider this one to be a classic as well. This is another one where every time I listen to it, I love it. But I really need to sit down. I, I should probably do that soon. Sit down with that one and really listen to it. He puts out a lot of dope compilations though. Like this one is a uh, Jukebox 45s. It's just a bunch of 45s and shit. This is a fun one. I fucking I pull this out every holiday and I terrorize the family with it. It's just uh, a bunch of weird Christmas music from like all these amazing Stone's Throw artists and affiliates and it's a wild record. I'm telling you, it drives the fucking family crazy. This was a really good compilation. Uh, you can see Q-Tip, Quali, MF Doom, Dilla, Mad Lib, Quasimodo. Um, they did this. They hit this kick there for a little bit in the mid 2000s, where they were just cranking out these compilations, and I loved it. It was like it reminded me of the old school mixtapes. You know, like this one. I consider this to be a classic album. It's a classic compilation. Like this is as good as a compilation could be expected. Uh, Mad Villainy, Mad Lib, Dilla. I think Guilty Simpsons on there. Oh No starts it off with an incredible track. Chrome Children, I love this album. Uh, they followed it up. Chrome Children 2, which is a decent album, but not nearly as good. I had Percy P on it, I think. Yeah, Percy P. I love anything with Percy P. I'm a huge Percy P fan. Not as good, but still good. Uh, we'll get these out of the way. I just haven't had time to put them on a shelf yet. I'm not going to comment on this one. I haven't listened to it nearly enough. A lot of people are speaking incredibly highly of it, so I'm excited. Uh, I just I got to find the time. And this is one, obviously, obviously everybody knows that's a classic album. It's the album that launched Mad Lib's career. And even back then, you could tell, like even that early, you could tell that dude was going to be special. This was the follow-up to that album. It's uh, kind of like their version of Nonfiction's The Green Album. I'm not sure which one came first, but essentially we never got a proper follow-up, but they did release like compilations of lost recordings and B-sides and rarities. and it's, it's cool. It's nice to have more, but it would have been nicer to have an actual follow-up. Uh, this kicked off Mad Lib's Beat Conductor series which is a series of uh, instrumental beat tapes uh, where he just, he usually follows a theme. This one I believe was just um, thematically like the soundtrack to a movie that wasn't made. That's a solid album. I personally felt like this one, the beat conductor in India, was not only better than that, but also better than the albums that come after it. Like I think this is probably the highlight of the whole beat conductor series front to back that's just a incredible incredible instrumental album this was made as a tribute to Dilla and this is really good too I mean it's as good as you would expect a, a Mad Lib tribute to Dilla to be like it's you can tell it was made with a lot of love and passion and it's great too but just I, I love that in India is just my favorite just I think everything about it works the Mind Fusion series is just uh, kind of a clusterfuck of like mixes and it's a lot of weird throwaway shit. I was really, uh, when I very first started collecting CDs, these were like my original grails. Like I wanted to own 
all five of them. And they're all fairly rare albums, but they're also albums where if you keep your eyes on them, you'll be able to find them for cheap here and there. So just over the course of probably five years, I just slowly pieced them all together, picking them up for cheap whenever I could find them. And it's not, like, again, they're not albums I'm super, super into. But they still mean a lot to me just because they were such a big part of my collection. And I was so proud to have all of them. This one was an oddity I ran across. Live on Chocolate City. Uh, recorded live, Chocolate City Radio. Sometimes you just you'll find random Mad Lib projects you didn't even know existed. The Medicine Show is legendary at this point. It was a mixture of uh, original releases and uh, mixtapes. So uh, the way it worked was the odd numbers were the original albums, and then the even numbers were the mixtapes. So like uh, Volume One here was uh, a, a tape with Guilty Simpson. This is uh, him and Guilty Simpson working together. Volume 2 that followed it up was, I believe, Brazilian Jazz. This was probably my favorite tape in the whole series. I love Brazilian Jazz. I love the, the cuts that he finds to put on here. I've listened to that probably more than any other in the whole series. Uh, 3 was a beat conduct in Africa, which I didn't, honestly, I didn't like this one. I've tried to listen to it a few times and it just it doesn't do nothing for me. I really none of the beats hit me. This was a reggae mixtape, which was a better. What was it? Blunted in a bomb. I think it was blunted in a bomb shelter. I think this one was better than that, or maybe I got that backwards. One of them was really good, and the other one was crazy disappointing. I got okay. This was, uh, I don't even remember what this was. I think it's an instrumental album. They, uh, the cover, and there was a bent, I keep them all sealed, just because as you can see, they have no back, and they come with the, uh, like the little spines that they have on the Japanese CDs, and I like the way it looks aesthetically, so I just keep them sealed. And the booklet was bent, and they just sent me another booklet with it. I was like, all right, cool, fuck it. I'll throw it up there. This was, uh... I don't, I'm not sure, the Mind Wreck was like, or what was it called? The Brain Wreck Show. Like psychedelic, jazz, rock, weird. I'm very open-minded with music. I like a lot of different genres. I like a lot of different things. But this tape was just fucking, it did nothing for me. Like, I really, really disliked that tape. Because I didn't know what the fuck it was supposed to be. I don't understand it. It's a jazz album. Uh, as Mad Lib fans know, he does a lot of uh, jazz work under various, various, he has whole jazz, fictional jazz groups with fictional individual players and like, he's, he's a lunatic, but he's brilliant. It's another jazz, I'm assuming that must be a mixtape, what one we on, six, yeah, that must be a jazz mixtape. Uh, the Medicine Show continues on the rest of the shelf, I have it broken up just because this was the only spot I could fit these. Uh, it's another jazz album right there. What was this other one? But yeah, his jazz albums. Okay, just a few of his jazz. I like his. Uh, I like Mad Lib's jazz albums. Uh, they're not as good as straight up jazz to jazz albums, but as far as like a hip hop take on a jazz album, it's it's dope. It's experimental. It's weird. It's different. But yeah, guys, that wraps up that row. Uh, next time, obviously, we're going to be going on. We're going to be finishing up the Mad Lib. There's still a lot more Mad Lib to go. Mad Lib runs halfway through the shelf. Uh, and then we're going into the more of the Stone Stow artists. So we got, you know, Metaphor. Oh No is in there, I think. Uh, Guilty Simpson, Percy P. Then we're running into Jay Dilla. And it's uh, it, should be, it should be a lot of fun, guys. Until then.